The Army Air Forces experimented with simple, almost rustic, wooden wings and tails attached to 2,000-pound bombs to create the GB-1 glide bomb as early as 1941. The forerunner of today's standoff weapons, glide bombs promised miles of lateral travel to a target that could keep a bomber formation away from dangerous flak defenses. The GB-1, made by aircraft manufacturer Aronka, lacked the ability to be steered by a pilot after dropping. It relied on an autopilot to stabilize it in azimuth, while its slanting descent predicted its final destination. A precision munition it was not. The air staff opined that from altitudes up to 30,000 feet, 100% of the released glide bombs could fall inside a city the size of Dayton, Ohio. If that sounded mediocre, the advocates of glide bombs said that from an altitude of 5,000 feet or less, the majority of glide bombs dropped could find their way to a factory-sized target. Hap Arnold wanted to see the GB-1 tested in combat, and this film depicts the first use of GB-1s in wartime action on May 28, 1944. The target was the city of Cologne, Germany, and more specifically and optimistically, a large rail marshalling yard. It is said variously that 109 to 116 GB-1s were released. Some impacted in the marshalling yards, while others landed miles away. B-17 could carry two GB-1s under the bomber's wings, a smaller payload than a normal internal mission load.
If the GB1 project did not gain momentum, the simple plywood wings and tail lived on experimentally over Tonopah, Nevada in upgraded test variants like the radio-guided GB8. The Central Nevada Museum in Tonopah displayed the weathered remains of one of the Aronka glide bombs, a tangible reminder of hectic wartime efforts to create standoff weapons for aircraft to deliver. I'm Fred Johnson for the Aerial Images Channel. Thanks for watching. Have you joined the more than 114,000 subscribers to Aerial Images? We appreciate it.